Hey guys, in this week's segment of Piston Malaysia's Buyer's Guide, we have the Honda City Hatchback. This is the V-Spec without the Honda Sensing Suite. It costs 91,000 ringgit, 91,600 ringgit. And this is the Toyota Yaris 1.5G, it's the top of the line. It costs 87,600 ringgit. There's roughly about 4,000 plus separating these two cars. So which one should you spend your money on? Now we're going to try put both the cars, both these cars to very different tests. We're going to see which one is more spacious, which is nicer to drive, which has better features. But in terms of design, that one, we're going to leave it to you because both are quite handsome cars and design is always subjective. You love it, you hate it. It's up to you actually. But to start off with, we're going to see which is more spacious. And to do that, we have all of these items that we're going to try to fit inside both cars. So we're going to start off with a motorcycle riding bag. This is from Ducati. We have a stroller. We have a child seat. We have a gym ball for shits and giggles. We have a tricycle. We have a full-size mountain bike with a baby seat. And we have a travel bag. So I just imagine that you would want to fit all of these, car, all of these things into your car. Lah. But before we go any further, a message from our sponsor. I know there are many different brands of fuels out there. You can either get it right where it works for life or you can get it incredibly wrong. And that's where BH Petrol and its Infinity RON95 and RON97 Euro 4M are different from the rest. How is it different, you may ask? Well, BH Petrol uses the latest generation German additives to provide the perfect support for modern engines. This additive is specially formulated to work with modern engines. It's designed to keep your fuel injectors clean and to prevent them from blocking up. Besides that, the Infinity RON95 and Infinity RON97 Euro 4M fuels also have enhanced corrosion inhibitors. These range of petrol also reduce friction between the piston and the engine walls. This translates into reduced energy loss, giving you instant and consistent fuel savings. And that is why you will never go wrong with BH Petrol's Infinity RON95 and RON97 Euro 4M. It is the right choice. So now we are going to start with the Honda City Hatchback. But the Honda City Hatchback has a trick up its sleeve and it's called Ultra Seats. Ultra Seats are basically adaptable uh, sitting positions where basically there are four different settings to this. Uh, long mode, tall mode, uh, utilitarian mode, utility mode and such. So before we try to put all of these things inside the car, we're going to demonstrate what ultra seats actually are. So let's start with utility mode. Now, this is known as utility mode. This is very simple, straightforward. All the seats, the back seats are flat. Now, take note of how flat the entire floor actually is. So, a lot of cars are able to do this, but very few are able to fold flat, such as this. Now, let's explore something called tall mode. This is basically tall mode. As you can see, the back seats are folded upwards and you get this huge space to keep taller items. Now there are two other modes. Now let's start with long mode. This is basically long mode. This is where you can keep abnormally long items straight up that way. And you even have space for one other passenger. Now let's check out refresh mode.
Now this is basically refresh mode where the entire interior turns into sort of a bed. Doesn't seem very comfortable, but it's comfortable enough for a weekend's getaway. You're going camping, but there's just enough for two people. Well, you know what they say, two people in enclosed places. Comfortable, right? Very comfortable. And now it's turn for the Honda City hatchback to prove its worth, whether it can fit all of these items inside a very cool interior with ultra seats and such. So this is the ultimate space test. Let's do this. Job. So that's, obviously we could fit everything into the Honda City hatchback thanks to the Ultra seats. However, it doesn't look very comfortable. Let me show you. Front pass passenger doesn't look like he or she has a lot of space. We couldn't fit the stand for the mountain bike or the tonneau cover. And Baby here looks like he or she is also going to be very uncomfortable throughout the journey. But fact of the matter is we could fit almost everything for probably a week's getaway. All right guys, same test, same items, different car. Now we're gonna to try to fit all of those items in the Toyota Yaris. Let's do this. And guess what? We were able to fit everything, everything, not except for the tonneau cover, including the stand which the Honda City hatchback couldn't accommodate. However, it came at a cost. Front passenger seat, totally compromised for comfort. Absolutely no space. Over here, you do have still got space for a backpack, even maybe one or two other smaller bags. However, rare word visibility is completely compromised. You can't use your rear view mirror. Baby doesn't look like he or she is going to be very comfortable at all. And to accommodate the stroller, the driver had to give up on a lot, a lot of comfort. It's going to be, I can tell you that I will not be able to fit in here. There's no way I will be able to fit in here. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to drive like this at all. So. That's how we made everything fit. The Honda City hatchback couldn't accommodate the 
the stand for the mountain bike, but it was a little bit more comfortable than the Yaris. However, the Yaris was able to fit everything, but at a price. So both are actually quite impressive in terms of space. So that was an absolute surprise that the Yaris was able to accommodate everything that we threw at it just as well as the city. Except that in the Yaris, comfort obviously took a beating where else in the city, you actually you and your passengers are obviously able to sit a bit more comfortably than in the Yaris. Now we move on to the engines. Both cars are powered by 1.5 litre engines. The Toyota comes with this, with its own iconic dual VVTi technology, where else the City comes with Honda's also iconic VTEC technology. In terms of gearbox, both these cars are mated to a CVT gearbox. Not my favourite. I find continuous variable uh, transmissions to be very draggy, very droney. They make a lot of noise, but they don't get you anywhere very fast. But that's besides the point, I guess because both these cars are not actually about power, they are about fuel economy. But before we get to fuel economy, let's speak a little bit about power. The Yaris produces 107 PS and 140 Nm of torque, where else the city has about 121 PS and 145 Nm of torque. Both these cars, uh, power is not the name of the game when it comes to both, both of these cars. However, the city, I find it to be a little bit more fun to drive in, in corners because it comes with steering mounted pedal shifters. So that gives you a little bit more control over the gears, that, the gear you want to be in when you enter a corner. It lets you use engine braking and it lets you downshift or upshift according to your wheel. The Yaris 2 has that but not pedal, steering mounted pedal shifters. You still have to use the gear knob to select your, the gear that you want to be in. But that aside, both cars are designed for fuel economy. We've been driving these cars around for a couple of days already and we are still down to about slightly more than quarter tank, which is just testament to how economical both these cars are. As B segment hatches, these cars are better suited to day-to-day -day, uh, comfort, day-to-day -day usability, fuel economy included. Now let's talk about a little bit about interior comfort. The Toyota Yaris, when it comes to the interior, the Yaris feels a little dated when compared to the Honda City. The design, the look and feel, everything feels like it's just stuck in the mid-2000s. Well, the City is a lot more advanced. In the Yaris, you also get fabric seats. The seats are comfortable, there's no doubt they're manually adjustable but they're just not as good as those in the city. The city is, feels a little bit more premium, feels a little bit more plush. But that aside, the quality of the, of the Yaris feels top notch. Well, it is Toyota and Toyotas are known to build stuff that will probably outlast you. Anyway, in terms of the interior, you get this seven inch touchscreen uh, entertainment system here is connected to six speakers, emitted, uh, six speakers placed around the cabin. Uh, that aside, uh, air conditioning, you just get a single zone air conditioning together with all of these buttons. These are all manual buttons, nothing too fancy over here. As I said, you don't get pedal shifters. You do, however, get a standard dash cam that is located up here. Other than that, it's just same old, same old inside here. Let's check out the back seats. We've already proven that in terms of space, both these cars are quite evenly matched. Even the sitting for passengers in the back seat, well, it's quite generous at the back here, even for somebody of my size. And I appreciate the fact that you get twin USB slots at the back here. In terms of comfort, it's all right, actually. Now, this is the interior of the Honda City. It looks very premium. It feels very premium. It's very unlike the Honda Cities of the past. I mean, check out this seat. It's full leather and it's astoundingly comfortable and it's, it just grips you in the right places. Check out this headrest. It's so plush, you know. Even the steering wheel feels brilliant in your hands and I really appreciate that it comes with pedal shifters and it also comes with cruise control 
which the Toyota Yaris doesn't. But in terms of the interior, the Honda City wins hands down. Both cars come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They're not wireless, but they still come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, the entertainment system in the Yaris feels a little dated and it's a 7-inch touchscreen, where else in the Honda City, it's an 8-inch touchscreen and it feels, looks and feels very 2022. It also has this triple dials over here and it feels, looks and feels very BMW-like, mid-2000s BMW-like in terms of quality and design as well. You get twin USBs at the front here together with the power outlet and the look and feel of the interior of the Honda City. It's just such a nice place to be in. If you have not noticed, Honda is actually moving a little bit more upmarket both in terms of quality, design and its price as well. Let's go check out the back seats. One thing I appreciate about the Honda City is that it comes standard with tinting at the back here. So tinting is now Tinting for the rear windows and the back window is actually legal now in the eyes of the JPJ, right? And I appreciate the fact that it comes tinted this way. So it's just, it adds to the premiumness of the Honda City as well. And in terms of space, look at this. It's actually a lot more spacious in here. So I think you'll be more comfortable at the back here as compared to the Yaris. But I somehow feel that the back seats of the Yaris are a little bit more comfortable than the Honda City. The other thing is, the Honda City doesn't have USB slots at the back, but it, they do have power outlets. And it's just as simple as buying uh, a power outlet uh, charged USB socket. Of course, that one you need to buy it from a third party. Lah. In terms of back seat, look, comfort, quality brilliant in terms of driving feel driving refinement and driver comfort i think the yaris delivers a little bit better than the city especially in terms of refinement you know you can go about your daily business and you can hardly hear the world outside at normal urban speeds at least you know uh, i really like what toyota has done in terms of uh, isolating the cabin as well as its passengers, driver included, from the outside world. You hardly hear what's going on outside. Of course, you do get the tire noise, you hear what's happening underneath you, but you don't really hear what's going on outside. So in terms of refinement, I think the Yaris delivers really well. In terms of, the other thing that I really like about the Yaris is that just for 85,600 ringgit, which is the price of the top of the line 1.5G, you're actually getting quite a lot of stuff. You get things like blind spot monitor, which is very important. You get stuff like rear cross traffic alert, which is also very important. You get seven airbags, where else the city just gives you six. You get electronic brake force distribution with brake assist, and you get basically a whole lot of safety suites for 85,600 ringgit. However, I do wish that it came with cruise control because in my books at least, wow, there's a bike that just went past and you know how noisy bikes can get and I hardly heard that bike. That's how good refinement is, guys. So anyway, I was talking about cruise control. So never underestimate the importance of cruise control because it just really helps you get comfortable, especially on those long, boring journeys that can get really draggy and very cumbersome and tiring. So. Never underestimate the importance of cruise control. The other thing that I really wish that the Yaris had was I wish that the driver would have a little bit more adjustability in terms of sitting position. I'm talking about the steering wheel. It's only adjustable, adjustable for tilt. It's not adjustable for reach. So that means that if I wanted to get closer to the steering wheel, for my height at least, I would need to pull the seat forward, which just means that my driving comfort will be compromised because I would be a little, it'll be a little bit more cramped. But other than that though, the Yaris delivers nicely. It's a very nice, comfortable interior, quiet as well. And that's, I guess, 
when you go about your daily business that's what's very important it also has a very nice entertainment system six speakers only but that's that, that doesn't matter so in that sense i think the yaris delivers very nicely now immediately after you step into the city after driving the yaris you feel like you have stepped out of a time bubble in the yaris you feel like you're stuck in the mid 2000s well in the honda city you feel like finally you have caught up with the modern world and you're back in 2022 i'm talking about the look and feel of the interior the dashboard at least looks and feels a lot a lot better than the yaris i love how this eight inch touch screen that controls the entertainment system and such i love how it completely dominates the dashboard it makes it feel very modern it makes it feel very technologically advanced as compared to the yaris in terms of quality everything is top notch the seats are fantastic i appreciate that they come wrapped in leather they look and feel like they belong in a honda civic at least or in a much more premium car not in a city and it's i like that it comes in the city but wow i gotta say that it feels very nice overall the interior of the city looks and feels much better than the toyota yaris but I feel the Yaris does the refinement game better than Honda. In, this, in the Honda city, I can hear the droning noises of the engine, I can hear tire noises, I can hear the world outside, cars and bikes passing by next to me. I don't hear that in the Yaris. So as far as refinement is concerned, the Toyota is better. The other thing is, the Honda City V-Spec also doesn't offer as much safety systems as the Yaris does. And keep in mind that this is about four to 5,000 ringgit more expensive than the Yaris. So it doesn't have things like blind spot monitoring. It doesn't have things like lane keep assist. It doesn't have all, it even doesn't have rare cross traffic alert. It doesn't have all of these things. But if you wanted a Honda City that has all of those things, you have to spend about 5,000 ringgit more to get the V-Spec Honda Sensing uh, variant. That aside, the Honda, driving the Honda City feels better because of the way the city makes you feel. You feel rich in here. You feel better in here because simply because of how the interior looks and feels. It makes you feel good makes you feel rich and that's important so that's that then guys toyota yaris 1.5 g 85,600 ringgit versus honda city 1.5 v spec which is now in the market for 91,600 ringgit more which would you choose the toyota yaris has much much nicer much refined driving standards as compared to the honda city well so honda city has a much more modern dashboard a much more modern look and feel and it actually makes you feel rich whereas the toyota yaris well it still feels like it's quite dated however the yaris has better safety systems as compared to the honda city and if you wanted equivalent uh, safety sense safety standards for the honda city well you're gonna have to spend about ten thousand ringgit more because the honda v spec with honda sensing actually cost 10,000 ringgit more than the Toyota Yaris. Well, in terms of storage space, well, the Yaris actually surprises by being able to accommodate everything that we threw at it. However, the city though is much more comfortable, was able to accommodate all of that, but was more comfortable to drive as well as for the passengers. Both cars are actually evenly matched in terms of features. LED headlights front and back for the Yaris, LED headlights for the Honda City front and back. In terms of feet, as far as features go, both are quite evenly matched. I also really appreciate the fact that the City comes with cruise control. And that really makes, it's a game changer for me actually because if you're spending a lot of time on the highway, cruise control is important. Anyway, let us know what you would pick in the comment section below. Toyota Yaris 1.5G or the Honda City 1.5 V-Spec. Thank you for watching. I'm Keshe Dillon, and this is Piston Malaysia.